Hi. Thank you, everybody. First of all, a quick confession. You know, sitting on any TEDx stage, I always feel like an imposter because here are people who have humongous achievements. I haven't done any such thing. I only have a few thought-provoking ideas once in a while, and I want to share it with people. So here we go. Uh, I went through the theme of this session, and I kind of summarized it in my own head. And what I believe what it says is being successful is kind of overrated. You know, when you say it's not rocket science, you say, yeah, being successful is put too much on a pedestal. And it is overrated. Basically, what matters is how much you care. Do you really care about what you want to do? Do you really care about what you want to get at? And that, I think, is far more important than just being successful. What I want to talk about is just one aspect of it. We understand that, yes, intelligence is put on a pedestal. The biggest problem is intelligence is an individual trait. There is nothing called collective intelligence. So what happens is 1 plus 1 is always less than 2. This is the fallacy of the collective. And I'll show it to you what I mean. You know, like MIB, I, I really like MIB. You know, don't think that they are like very flippant movies. Men in Black are very good. There are some very philosophical lines. So this is one of the lines, which said, a person is smart, but people are dumb. When three people, five people, seven people get together, we are so dumb, it's unbelievably, uh, in, it's unbelievable that how, how come so many intelligent people got together and doing such dumb thing, you know? Individually brilliant, but there was a corn farmer who used to every time win the best quality corn produced every year, year after year. So somebody went and asked him, what is your secret? So he said, you know what? I do the best corn and I promptly give it to all my neighboring guys. So he said, what do you mean? Because then their corn will also become better. He said, no, because if I have very good corn and they have got bad corn, then the cross-pollination will bring my corn down. So to make sure that my corn becomes better and better, I keep improving their corn. See, there's a fundamental difference in this thinking, but this thinking you will not find. Look at this. You think everybody is dumb in this traffic jam? They're not, na? individually they're not. But everybody wants to go faster than the other guy. What is happening as a result? Everybody is going slow. How lovely it is, right? So now you know that MIB is right. That individually we are very bright, but people are dumb. You know? So human interaction as a collective. First of all, people don't share information. We think that we are sharing information. We actually share bias and prejudice. We only share bias and prejudice. We layer our personal bias on that information, and then we share it with people. So we don't say, so-and-so has, you know, got a fantastic job. We say, so-and-so got a fantastic job, I think they are very well connected. <laughs> so we don't, we don't, we never share information. We share our biases and prejudice. Agreement, therefore, is a very horrible place to be in. Because when you're agreeing between seven, ten people, you're agreeing on a bunch of bias. Internet was supposed to be the information superhighway, right? This is how internet started, we all know. I mean, a lot of you have not seen life before internet. We have seen life before internet. So yeah, internet fundamentally changed us as people and stuff like that. I still remember that dial-in connection. I used to have MTNL dial-in connection. So all those things I remember. And internet fundamentally changed us as people. But it was supposed to be the information superhighway. Then what happened? Then came social media. So what it has become? What have we got out of social media? Bhakt, secular, libtard, Prestitute, fantastic, no? what, a, what a great example of human thinking, right? I mean, by getting onto the internet, we have started calling each other prostitute and libtard. Lovely, isn't it? So, basically, it has become a bias and prejudice superhighway, if you notice. Everybody comes out of social media angry. Technology revolution, we said that we'll attain singularity. You know, singularity is the ultimate form of human intelligence and stuff like that. What have we got? Any of you have seen Wall-E, that film? That is sophilarity, right? This is what we have obtained. See, we have become this. Hannah, we are lying on our bed, eating our popcorn and 
looking at our social media, right? So evolution towards super intelligence or absence of discomfort, think about it. We are supposed to be evol evolving towards super intelligence, right? What we are becoming slobs, just absence of discomfort. So some, you know, like internet will take care of it. Alu khatam ho gaya, swiggy mart. It's just get rid of discomfort, that's about it. So are we becoming a better race or are we showing narrow personal interest? And I'm not talking about just Indians and all, I'm talking about human race, right? Because technology wants what life wants, you know. Kelly, who is the, uh, who is one of the biggest internet gurus, he said that, right? And what happened, see, we wanted increased efficiency, right? What did we get? We got Swiggy and Amazon. So we don't have to move our backside. We sit at our place and efficiency has increased. Increased opportunity, right? So boys, girls, opportunity, interaction. So what happened? Tinder, Happen, OkCupid, okay right click, left click, whatever, God knows what they are. Uh, uh, then increased emergence. We wanted increased emergence as a race. What did we get? Snapchat, Instagram. Think of it, you know, increasingly is getting narrower and narrower, right? It should have become bigger and bigger. Or increased involvement we wanted. What did we get instead? Xbox, PS. This is our level of, you know. My son actually believes he is playing, playing football by playing FIFA. He plays on manager mode, he plays on player mode, this. I, I mean, they actually believe that, you know. Increased beauty, what happened? We got Photoshop, <laughs> we got filters. So now every camera, com every camera software comes with 20 filters. Fair, dark, not so fair, spotlight, not so spotlight. So see, see where we are going, it's, it's becoming narrower and narrower of interest, isn't it? So if technology starts to define us as a race, we need mechanisms to keep our human tendencies at check. Because if it's left to us, we will all become that wally. -E. Sit at one place, keep on, you know, whatever, uh, right, right swipe and left swipe on, uh, you know, the opposite gender or same gender or whatever it is, and keep ordering food and keep ordering and play Xbox and PS and, you know, take a photograph and Photoshop it. So technology, a unidimensional progress code. We call it the fourth industrial revolution, the age of information, right? So everybody and anybody is getting smarter. So smartphone, smarter phone. Smart camera, smarter camera. Television is the idiot box. You get smart TV, you know? <laughs> so you, you, can, you can imagine. What is smart TV showing you? Nagin. <laughs> so robots and apps are making us more intelligent, right? Quote unquote. So Eric Schmidt, you know who is he, you know, Google's Eric said that I defy you to argue against me that making people smarter is a wrong goal. As a technologist, he is not wrong. But look what has happened eventually. You know, so living at the age of entitlement, being smarter is not becoming more entitled, right? As a race, we are becoming more and more entitled. So there's a famous book, Living in the Age of uh, Entitlement, The Narcissism Epidemic. We are just becoming more and more narcissistic, right? Pull back and think about it. We are. Narrow view of the world acutely individualistic tendencies. Our tendencies have become so individualistic that there could be a tendency difference between father and son, husband and wife, you know, sitting in the same house, you have very narrowed down, you know, personal tendencies and that's what scares me. That's what scares me as a student of society and life. The angry Amazon customer, this is a stereotype, right? There are guys who are permanently angry against a delivery mechanism. The way they treat the delivery uh, people at times scares me. I believe there was a case where somebody hit one, uh, you know, like food app person on the head. And who? A young girl. A young girl hit, uh, hit a food delivery guy on his head. The selfie obsessed teenager. People die trying to take selfies. I mean, I think, 
I can see Deepak here, so he will know he's from Bandra. I believe there is on an average, one person dies at every day at that, uh, you know, Bandra fort area, trying to take a selfie and falling into the sea, loudly expressing their demand without trying to make us better. Next comes data, because data has also now become intelligent. So if you see data, shall we look at data as intelligence? Everybody will say yes, then we should look at the history of data. Where did we learn this intelligence from? Okay. We actually learned data from CIA, KGB. They were the best guys on, so a lot of algorithms you are seeing in the world today has been developed by these military uh, agencies, right? So CIA, KGB. So which was basically information about you that can be used against you. So you understand what is happening with data. So basically, people are picking up your data and at some point in time hoodwinking you, trying to make you spend more, trying to make you fall into traps, trying to make, into, uh, trying to make you fall into materialistic traps. So Siri is now suggesting how many more products and services you can buy. Siri was supposed to wake me up in the morning, right? That was Siri's job. The Siri is now suggesting that I think you should buy blah, 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 blah. Okay, because Siri has figured out that I have a weakness for something. So it's my data squarely being used against me, right? If you bought this, you may also like this. You know this, this is a famous line in e-commerce companies. This is a basic level of using data, right? They look at your last 10 purchases, last 100 purchases, see a pattern, see how many people like you are buying what and boom. If you like this, you may also like this. So what, all this data revolution, everything is creating smarter salespeople. It claims to make our lives better, but it makes actually balance sheets and valuations better. It hasn't made our life better. You know, so somewhere it played up to very narrow interest. I must tell you this story of Disney magic band. So I went to Disneyland, anybody who has a young child at that, I mean, at some age would go to Disneyland, I went and they give you this thing called the magic band. And it's fabulous, you know, like it tells you which uh, ride will come up next, how to do this. And I was thinking that it's actually enhancing my experience, it's a lovely thing. What a beautiful use of technology, what a beautiful use of data. Later, somebody made a presentation to me, one of the, one of the companies which created the magic band for Disney. You know, what is the primary purpose? So that they can upsell lunch. The primary purpose was upselling lunch. So if I buy a $10 lunch, they will make sure that looking at my data, they would be able to, you know, sell me a $20 lunch or a $30 lunch. That was the primary purpose of that. So my heart sank. And, you know, like I understood that in the hands of humanity, you know, this next to this picture and you know we have failed ourselves, right? See. I mean, I'm seeing a series, a very interesting series called the Rocket Boys. And the, you see the desire in, of creating an atomic bomb. We started there. We started with atomic, understanding atomic energy. And it is possibly the biggest leap the human race has ever made by, you know, unleashing the power of the atomic uh, energy. And this is what the first utilize, utilization was. So I think in our quest for progress, we have failed ourselves as a human being. So perhaps machines and robots can success where we are can succeed where we are failing. It's it may sound counterintuitive, but that's not true. You know why? Because a few things machines are slightly good at. Machines don't have prejudice. That's the beauty of it. Humans have prejudice. Machines don't have prejudice. Yeah, it's another matter that we teach prejudice to machines and we program it. That's a different thing. But machines on their own as a fundamental premise won't have prejudice. Peer learning. When one learns, everybody learns. One machine learns, the entire network learns, right? It doesn't happen in your class. When one student learns, doesn't mean everybody is learning. They, they, they want to keep it to themselves, right? Because then he or she has to come first. So second wale ko nahi dikhana hai. Machines don't have those problems. One learns, everybody learns, right? Pure information exchange, not bias exchange. So between machines, the exchange that happens, 
is pure information exchange, right? The real talent today, more than the skill of coding, is to crack the code of empathy, the courage to assess creations through emotion, goodwill, and benevolence. This is far more important today than just learning the art of coding. We have to crack the code of this for us to become better people in the evolution scale. Otherwise, what will happen? Today, atomic bomb, tomorrow there would be a, you know, like a data warfare. Day after, there could be a computer warfare. I mean, where does it, where does it end? So, robo and AI will change the human race if and only if what we can do is we can make them like the best version of ourselves. This is where the beauty lies. We are not unilaterally bad. There are times we, when we are fantastic. And there are all of us are like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. There are times when we are outstanding and there are times when you are pathetic. What machines can do is to pick up the part where we are outstanding and replicate it. That is what artificial empathy will lead to. Artificial empathy will not lead to uh, you know, like our being more competitive with each other and stuff like that. That is that, you know, the bad part of the human being. That part we don't need to replicate. We need to just, see, we are talking about machine, algorithm, right? So we can just pick up the best part and replicate and multiply it, right? That's what I think is the future. So the transformation from a self-centered, self-evolved way to life to one dedicated to well-being of others is the process of human evolution. So maybe an empathy programmed AI robot could be our best bet to get there. Think about it. Because every time it will stop us from being bad. Every time it will tell us it's stupid to try and, uh, you know, all of you to be beating the other guy in the traffic. Possible nahi hai. So you will, you will get stuck in that jam. So because it has to be programmed in a manner that it keeps replicating the better part of us and try to suppress the slightly horrible part of us. But I'm just trying, you guys, I'm, I'm leaving you guys with a thought. So what is our future? Or where do you think our future evolution will be? A smarter human being or an AI robot with a heart? I'm going to place my bet on the latter. Because I think if one thing that can get us out of that rut that we are in, it would be possibly an AI robot with a heart which means something which has picked up the good side of us and have started replicating. I know it's not rocket science, but I want to leave you with a bigger question. Could it be cutting edge humanity? Maybe that's where the future lies. Thank you very much.